Deep in the California desert are some off the beaten path destinations that tourists rarely visit. This is a mysterious part of California with forgotten towns, toxic waters, and communities without laws. Hello adventurers and welcome to the desert. We are at our first stop, which is the Salton Sea. In 1905, water was diverted from the Colorado River into one of the lowest land basins in the United States. The flooding lasted for two years and created the largest body of water in California. It became a popular vacation spot for many years, but every year the sea kept getting saltier due to agricultural runoff until it became saltier than the ocean. This toxicity in the water led to this vacation town getting abandoned and millions of fish dead. We just got to the beach and the first thing we noticed is the sand had a different texture. It was crunchy and we looked down and I'm pretty sure this is all fish bone. It's so eerie to me that this entire beach is just covered with fish bones. What at first glance I thought was just random rocks on the beach, by taking a closer look I actually see bones. So they're rocks made out of bone, but I don't know how that could be. Maybe from salt? What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think it could be from salt too. Maybe the salt hardening or something with how salty it is have turned some parts of bones into legit rocks. Being here is so deceiving in a way. We pulled up, there was rows of RVs, there was camping spots, there's a whole visitor center. This is a state park. We came to this beach, it almost looks like this nice white sand beach, but then you hear the crunching and you realize those aren't seashells. And it's hard because I could look out at this lake and I imagine boats, kayaks, jet skis. It almost feels like it's a normal place. And then it hits you that you're walking on bones. Hey Jan, where should we go next? Let's go to a beach resort. This doesn't look like a beach resort. So over here looks like what used to be a bedroom. Or an entrance to like the garage or the hallway. This is different. You could actually just walk right inside. The door is open and you could see the remnants of the furniture of the people who used to live here. The microwave is still there, the chair is still there. It's really like people just fled at the last moment and left all of their stuff, which is not what I was expecting. I would have thought these people would have had time to move but it almost looks like they left in a hurry and left behind a lot of their belongings. As we were driving through, we saw this unique looking spot that's super colorful and it popped out to us. And then I remembered that a lot of artists are coming down here and they're kind of trying to revive the town and they're putting in all these cool art installations. pulled up to another unique art installation. To me, it looks like a mixture between a UFO and a plane. Some 
some houses, like the one we were in before, is still fully intact where you could see old furniture. And then there are houses like this one that is almost a ruin, but yet you could still see some remnants of the house, like an old TV and the old fireplace. There's this old book in here. And the book looks really old, but I don't know if this is left from the house or if somebody recently came and put it in. There's also this huge carpet, which I'm assuming is new. Look at the way the trees are tied up, like it's for decoration. They have this little town library. It's really small, but there's a couple of shelves of books. And it just reminds me that people still live here. Although this is marketed as a ghost town, there are still at least 300 people who live here. We're at the Bombay Beach drive-ins, and this is one of the touristy locations in Bombay Beach. From what I read, it is a drive-in theater that is still functioning today. And all of these cars you see were actually brought in. And there's seats up here so the residents currently will have drive-in movie nights. Not 100% if that is accurate, but that is what I read online. It's surreal seeing such a booming vacation town turn into an abandoned ghost town. It's marketed as a ghost town, although I think that's deceiving because people do still live there. And although that number gets smaller every year and it is under 300, I think that not enough people talk about the fact that there are still residents there. When we started going into the houses to explore, how would we know if people we're living in those houses or not. You really have to be careful. And in a way, it's almost, to me, kind of rude to call it an abandoned ghost town because that's almost insulting to the people who still live there. So it's kind of a unique experience going there, but I enjoyed seeing things like the art installations and the bookstore and the little drive-in movie theater and see how local life is and how the locals live and how people are working to revive the town. I think it's inspiring. The next location is also very inspiring. We are heading to Salvation Mountain. This incredible piece of art was built by a man named Leonard King, whose life purpose was to spread a message of love. His story is just as beautiful as the mountain itself. It took him 25 years and 100,000 gallons of paint to complete his project. He had to overcome many obstacles along the way, which included attempts that didn't go as planned and even the city trying to tear down the mountain. But he persevered through these challenges. His unwavering faith and his commitment to sharing this message is truly inspiring. We have made it to Salvation Mountain, which is something I'm really excited about because it is a location that I've wanted to visit for years. I see these buckets of paint and it's really interesting because it took him over 100,000 buckets of paint to create this, which is absolutely insane. And I just wonder if it's here uh, just kind of as a memory or if these are the actual buckets of paint he used. So he created these little caves and inside it is so detailed, like the verses, the paintings. I just think this place is so incredible. I admire his faith and his dedication to something it's inspiring. I don't even know how to explain it, but I find this man to be incredibly inspiring the way he never gave up. Yeah. 
I think at the base of this mountain, when you see all of his work, you kind of feel like you enjoyed his vision. Like he had a clear vision of what he wanted to do and he did it and he made it and it's a lot of people here just to are here just to enjoy that. So most of the places we've been, there have been barely any people. So clearly there are a lot of people who drove all the way out here just to enjoy his work. I think that's really, really cool. Regardless of your faith, I think you need to appreciate his determination. He had this vision that he wanted to spread the message of love, the message of God's love, and all these people. He gets hundreds of visitors here every day. It's made news across the world, at least across the states. And it's just so incredible that his message is being spread. People are receiving this message of love and people come all the way out here. We are in the middle of nowhere. We haven't seen anybody else for a long time. And this place is packed with people. Like people are appreciating his work and his message, which I just think is so inspiring. It took him 25 years. That is so long and a few failed attempts and he just never gave up because he felt so called to spread this message across the world. And it's just successful and I am so inspired by it. Now it's time to head into Slab City. Known for not having any laws, Slab City is known as the last free place. Residents live off grid on a former military base in the desert. This alternative living community is full of art installations, self-made homes or squat homes, and individuals with unique stories to tell. Today we decided to visit the art museum. We have made it to the entrance of this East Jesus Art Installation Center and I'm excited to see what they have. It's so different and unique and already it's a little inappropriate and different. <laughs> This is made out of toothbrushes. It's so interesting. So what you are experiencing at this very millisecond started as the Slab City illegitimate garbage dump for four decades. That's right folks, this is where all the good people with the slabs came to dispose of all their trash illegally and drive away from it as quickly as they could, resulting in garbage piles literally larger than that tree behind you. It was insane, it was disgusting. And so when our founder Charlie came here nearly 15 years ago and saw this disgusting pile of garbage, he decided it was his destiny to quit his job, move out here and spend the rest of his one life on earth cleaning up that aforementioned pile of garbage and transforming it into something a little bit more beautiful with the help of more than 2,000 other artists, all of whom were committed to creating Charlie's dream of a world without waste, a place on this planet where every single thing that a human interacts with could be upcycled into art or transformed into something more beautiful than its original intention. right here is dedicated to BLM. This place is really interesting. I like how everything is made out of materials you could find like around your house or trash and they turned that into something artistic and unique and I just like how that garbage is repurposed into art. It's a very inspiring message as well. I wasn't expecting this location to be so inspiring. So we exist here as Imperial County's only officially recognized art museum to change the paradigm that surrounds the word trash and encourage people to really reframe what they see as the dichotomy between art and trash and what you can possibly do with the things that people see as refuse. You know, and, and as a volunteer here, I truly believe that if every single human on earth was to experience this message of a world without waste, we could truly save the human race, you know, and, and end this kind of, uh, I don't even know what you'd call it, uh, basically a, a timeline that is leading towards the future as mm -hmm. predicted in WALL-E, right? Mm -hmm. a, a landfill planet, if you will. So we exist to hopefully save the planet. 
I just wanted to thank the museum worker so much for interviewing with us. I believe that his message was truly inspiring and I hope that he inspired you just as much as he inspired us. I think that it is incredible that this desert community, we're in the middle of the California desert, like almost like the middle of nowhere and yet they're attracting such tourists and such crowds and they are really working to change the world here. And I am just, I know I've said inspired a million times, but I am inspired, I am humbled. And I really encourage you when you travel to look deeper into the communities that you're visiting. Here, everybody comes to take some Instagram shots. That's how I learned about this place. But nobody talks about the deeper messages behind these communities. I just really encourage you to take these messages to heart when you travel, to let travel change you, inspire you, and to use these lessons in your daily life. I would like to leave you with this last quote that I found from the Salvation Mountain website. It is Leonard's hope that his message of love will be seen all over the world and that people everywhere will show more love and compassion for their fellow man. He truly believes that love is the answer to a peaceful and harmonious existence.